hello and welcome to this webinar on five steps to a solid start line stay. I'm Stephanie Williams. I'm a One Mind Dogs instructor. I've been doing agility for 10 years. I have five agility dogs, three of whom are retired that not th um, three are Shelties. One is a young Border Collie I'm bringing up. So I've trained a lot of start line stays and hopefully I have a lot of really good information to share with you today. Um, if you are new to One Mind Dogs, I'll share with you a little bit about what our method is about. We are all about training from the dog's perspective and understanding agility from the dog's point of view. We have learned a lot from um, the experience of training a dog who could not hear, which would in a start line stay have its own um, particular um, ins and outs, but we learned a lot about how dogs understand the sport of agility from that experience. And we've also learned from training thousands and thousands of other dogs around the world that they all have the same language and they all understand the sport the same way. And so we take that and we helped that to uh, use that to help make the sport as fun as possible for the dog and for the handler. So it really teaches you to speak their language, um, feel like you have one mind together and that you are connected with them. Um, in a quite magical kind of way. And so today, even on the topic of start lines, we'll talk about how understanding the dog's perspective and the One Mind Dog's method will help build the skill of a start line. Um, don't forget also to join our 30-day agility challenge where you will get in your email free um, uh, tips and training videos and other little challenges that you can do that will let you learn more about One Mind Dogs and the method and um, have some fun with other members of our community. So be on the lookout for that one um, in your email as well. Um, and let's go ahead and start our webinar today. So again, our topic is five steps to a start line stay. And so you'll see five, five components, five categories um, that we'll cover that will help you to train a brand new start line stay or strengthen the one you have or repair the one that you have that maybe needs some maintenance or some fixing. And so we'll cover today criteria for start line stay. We'll talk about teaching a basic stay from the beginning. So how do you start to introduce the position um, and help them to understand how to hold that position? We'll add distractions. We'll add even more distractions. So advanced proofing is just another way of talking about how do we build the skills and elevate the skills so that they're really, really strong. And then finally, we'll get to maintenance and repair. Although if you are here to fix a start line stay that is a little bit broken down, then training the basic stay is also for you. Because as with many other agility skills that sometimes um, lose their strength, the answer is always to go back to foundations and train again from the beginning. And so here with our start line stays, that's the same. So we'll start right from the beginning um, with that. All right, so we'll go on now. I just mention a little bit more about teaching from the dog's perspective. So even with a stay, we're gonna think about how does the dog see the behavior that we're training and how do they understand it? And so it would be really nice if we could just explain to them that, hey, I'd like you to sit and stay on this spot until I say my release word, but we can't do that with verbal language. We have to show them. And the way that we show them is by using our rewards as tools for communication. So yes, rewards are ways to create value in behavior and make that behavior something the dog wants to do more of. Rewards are also your way of letting your dog know you are right. This is the right thing right now. And dogs are good at understanding you are right. You were right is a way more difficult message to get across. So timely rewards are part of how we train from their perspective, rewarding during the behavior for the exact behavior you're looking for, whether it's sit or down. Um, remember praise is also a reward. It's another way you can let your dog know that you're doing it right. So even if you have led out to a distance, you can still tell your dog that's really great, good job, and they'll understand that they are doing things the right way so we can communicate that way and yes we will teach a, um, a verbal that tells them to stay we'll teach a verbal that is a release lets them know when to get up we will show them exactly how to wait for that verbal so that they understand it really really clearly and so um, making a very clear picture for the dog of what is expected of them leads to reliability so be be mindful that you're creating clarity in your training um so starting with choosing your criteria well Stays have criteria just like other behaviors in agility do. So, and so by cri criteria, we mean, what are we looking for when we are seeing our dog on the start line, okay? And so think of criteria the same way you would think of um, 
criteria on the end of a contact because it really contact behaviors are stays just like start lines and we're often very focused on what do we want our dog to do for example on the end of a dog walk or the end of a teeter um, where we know that we want to see for example in a two on two off two back feet are in the contact zone two front feet are on the floor and you, the dog must wait there until you give a release word no matter what you do do you run past them or um, do handling or anything like that. And so with our stays, we want to have the same mindset that we have set criteria and we're holding the dog to that. We're teaching them what it is and then we're holding them to it consistently. Okay. So it means that you have to choose what is your stay criteria. First thing being position. And so will the dog sit? Will they down or will they be standing? And so I quite have a question mark around standing because I do feel that that behavior is a little bit harder to teach as a stay. And that when you're holding a dog to a criteria in a stand, it might be harder for you to see if they have moved. So, for example, in a sit or a down, very easy to, sit, to see that they're still holding that position. And we want them to stay absolutely still, not moving a muscle. And if they have creeped forward or they have um, started to get up from their down or stay or, or sit, it's easier to see. But if they're standing, if they happen to move a foot, will you see it? And if you don't see it, then isn't that still breaking the criteria? So we want to make sure that we can clearly see um, that the dog is holding their criteria, um, even if you're very far ahead of them and they're behind a jump. And so that's where we want to make sure we're choosing the behavior that lets us see that as easy as possible um, and that it's as clear as possible for the dog. And many times sit and down are more stationary for them. So um, choose one of those that will work best for your team. And then we're going to consider the location. So having the dog on the exact spot that you left them. So if they happen to creep forward a little bit, we have to go back and reset them. If they think that creeping forward is a habit that they can do, they will always do it and they'll do more of it. And eventually that leads to breaking the start line and starting the run. So um, even if they start to lift their bottom or anything like that, go and put them back absolutely still on the spot like little statues. Um, and then they should wait for their release word. So choose a word that is the signal that tells them to get up. It's okay or break or whatever you choose, um, but make sure they understand to hold that position until you give that exact word. So not other words, not other motions, that word is the signal to get up. And we want to make sure we're really consistent about them waiting for you to say your release word, not that you're about to say it. Some dogs will see you go about to say okay and they break on that um, whereas or you start to say the release word and they get up they you should be able to say the whole word so really hold them to super crystal clear criteria so clarity is going to lead to reliability when it comes to teaching a start line and anytime they break a start line we have to reset them um, if we allow that they break the start line and start running even if it's in a trial then they're going to always do it so even one time can lead to that or that's where we get start lines that are reliable in, tra in training but not at a trial because they were allowed to break the start line so be ultra consistent consistency is the key um, training and trials should always have the same set of rules for the dog if they know exactly what to expect they will do it all right and then you will have reliability so i'll show you what my start line um routine looks like and i'm just going to let you listen to the video watch what the um behaviors are and you'll see four examples of basically the same routine and i want you to listen to see um can you hear when i give that release word each time Ready. Okay, so there you have it. My start line routine, which is basically the same every time that I ask my dog to sit, take off the leash, or I might switch those two and take the leash off and then do the sit, but it's always sit, stay, I lead out, I say okay, we run.
every single time. And that consistency has made for even in, in very noisy, distracting environments, a lot of reliability. I've, um, my, with my, uh, with my Sheltie, um, the Shelties I've trained before and hopefully my young dog too. So keeping it ultra consistent and having an idea of a routine, um, as you stick to your criteria. So what will you do as you lead out to that, as you go out to the start line, leave your dog and go to your position. All right. And we'll talk about the, um, the leash in particular as part of today's presentation, because I think that's one where, um, we don't always think of that as a distraction, but it can be, um, next we'll talk about training the position. So once you've chosen sit or down, um, which one is going to be. We will use this same routine for training the position, okay? Um, the same procedure that you're going to see in this video, I will show you in a moment. Um, to teach a reliable stay. So here are the key things when you're starting off. One, your dog has to love the position. So we want to make that position have value, okay? We're using our rewards. We're building value in that position by making it very, very rewarding to stay in that spot, all right? And so know what your dog's favorite favorite rewards are and give them generously um, and in the position. So we're feeding them when they're sitting or when they're in a down, um, not at the end of the behavior only. We want to build to that, but the key is at first rewarding during the behavior. And remember, your rewards are what are telling your dog that they are right. Okay, so they're correct moment to moment to moment. And when we tell them that in little pieces, little pieces, bigger pieces of behavior that become duration or length of time. So we're teaching the length of time aspect of same right from the get go. Okay. Um, they also need to understand with absolute clarity, as we've said, when can they leave the position of stay? All right. And that is having a release word that we will also teach straight from the get go. Um, so I'll show you a video now that will give you an idea of how you begin teaching the basic position. All right. So we want to have several soft little treats in your hand. When you're starting off and you can have your dog on leash if you want to pick the um, treats that they really, really like. And then first we're going to use the treats as a lure to show, show the position. So if they've never done a sit or a down before, we're first teaching that. But as soon as we get that position, that moment, we're going to feed that treat right in that sitting position. And you can see how um, the trainer here is feeding so that the nose is a bit up, which helps keep the sit. And you're going to say your cue word, sit, as soon as your dog is sitting. And that moment now we're using those rewards to build value in sit and to let the pup know that this is the exact right behavior. So timeliness of rewards, really important when communicating to dogs what we're trying to teach them. And we're re rewarding during the sit, all right? So making sure that um, they are getting rewarded for the exact behavior. So during the sit, if they get up, then we're gonna put them back in the sit again and make sure that it's on the ground, um, all of that, all right? All really important. So we're already right from the get-go so making sure that we see our criteria, okay? Then as you're feeding that last treat, now is when you say your release word. So before they get up, the release word is given. So they already right from the first stage of training, they begin to learn to wait for their release word, all right? And we're gonna practice that release word so it becomes really nice and clear for them. Um, and that way from, from the beginning, we're creating that clarity, really, really important. Um, and then, once we've taught that, and here are the, the steps a little bit just that we're just using, food to lure the dog into position and then saying our cue word. And then as you're rewarding during the behavior, finally, as they're eating the last treat, you give your release. One point to remember is that when you're first teaching a stay, keep it separate from your foundations training. Um, grab someone to hold your dog or throw a treat so that they can go get it and you can run um, whatever you need to do there. But just be careful that you're not combining them too early because um, the skill needs to be pretty strong before we start to add stays to our foundation training, okay? But next we're gonna talk about how to add distractions because we do need to do that right from the get-go um, as soon as we start teaching this stay. So distance and movement are gonna be the two distractions you begin to work with right from the beginning. And that means your distance and your movement from your pup. So right away, we want them to understand that you are going to move away from them. And I'll show you that. Um, we also wanna practice in different environments. Um, so that will start simple like inside house and then build from there to slightly more challenging environments. So gradually adding distractions in the form of going to other environments or making other little changes. So inside your house, outside your house, in a quiet park, a busier park, um, gradually building the challenge little by little. And as we're rewarding during the stay, 
we're also thinking about getting more and more random with those rewards. So at first we're rewarding very generously, okay, um, quite frequently, but then we have to start to like build in little moments where there is no food coming to them, you're just praising them. So randomization where those increments between the rewards randomly get longer is the path that you get um, to duration where you're not rewarding during the stay, okay? So just be aware of being random um, as you work but now we'll first look at adding some basic distractions in the form of your movement. All right, so again, we'll lure the dog into a sit or cue the sit if you've already taught that. And then the first little bit of distance that you'll start to see is just lifting the treat higher from the pup. So at first we were feeding right to the mouth really quickly, but now we're already going to start to say that, hey, this reward might be farther away from you. But if you hold that stay, it will come back to you. And that's also an important piece of stay for pups to understand is the patience aspect. Stays are a patience exercise. And so we're just teaching them to wait for what they want. And here it's wait for the treat to come back to you. But later on, it will be wait for me to release you to run. Hopefully, because they run, they love running so much, that is the ultimate reward. Um, but we'll start just by moving the treat away and then you're going to add that the treat goes farther and farther away just by lifting your hands or moving around your dog and they're still just learning that by waiting the treat will come back to them and that's the first important part of stay that the reward goes back to the dog in position there we go and then we can add some more different types of little movements so right from right from the beginning showing the dog that will move around them um, or we'll do other types of little distractions like that one. So keeping it pretty simple and rewarding still pretty frequently and all during this day. Yeah, jumping jacks even. There you go. So you can see how consistent the trainer is here in rewarding position as she gradually increases the level of distraction. And that's what we're working on. And this could be one little training session, one or two minutes and then you end it with your release word. So really important that you say your release word, then they get up. If they were to get up during this, you would just replace them back into their position so that they realize that they have to wait for that release word. All right, so find as they're eating, release word, and then we go. And that might be one little session. All right. Then we also have to think about distance because we do need to be able to move away from our pups and our dogs and leave them on the start line and have them understand that we might be quite far ahead um, as courses get faster um, and with longer lines so really important and yes so like you'll, you'll see this with young puppies but this is for dogs of all ages okay and if you need to go back and retrain your stay and, and fix your broken start line this is the first stage these are the first stages reintroduce your position go back to making it really rewarding reintroduce distractions and perhaps if you are fixing a broken start line you're also going to consider changing the verbal cues you use so we'll talk more about those um, in a moment all right and here now we'll take a step back go right back to the pup and rewards and understanding that the re you might move away but the reward is coming back to them if they are patient and hold their stay all right and we'll move away a little bit at a time you can add other movements into this as well um, so that we can just kind of combine a little bit of distance and distraction in a simpler way right from the beginning and always rewarding in position and maybe you turn away from them a little bit keep an eye on them over your shoulder Older. We do need to walk forward as we make our lead out on the start line. So that's another little important piece that we can introduce right from the beginning. We can feed the final treat. As they're eating, we give the release word and go. And again, if they've gotten up during this little session, then you would just put them back in the position and on the spot and reward them some more so that they will wait for their release word. Okay. All right, good. We talked about randomizing rewards. So other little exercises that you can do to add distractions, some of you probably have already started teaching this, um, is a sit or stay that releases to a floor or toy. So you've already taught your dog, for example, to sit while you put their dinner bowl down and you say, oh, okay, or break or some other release word for them to go and eat. You've already started teaching this. And so this is just another way of using that. Um, 
as both a way to give a distraction. So food, food or toys um, rewards on, placed on the ground can be distracting to the dog. And what they will learn through this is that you are, that by waiting for that release word, by being patient, that they release to go get that food or toy that they want. And later that's going to be food or toy placed by the jump or elsewhere on the course um, so that they can learn to build that patience. And it, it's the final reward. So they, there we're saying that by waiting, I'll release you to get that. And so after working on that part you see an example of this in a little bit but as you're working on that you can place the food or toy on the uh on the floor and go back and reward your dog still in that stay position so that we're still rewarding them for holding the stay but the final reward is the release and then here too you would just gradually randomize going back and rewarding until you're not having to do that anymore and they will just hold the stay and wait to be released to go get the food uh, food bowl or the toy that you've placed on the ground there. So really handy little exercise that you'll see in a moment um, for how you can use that to help further strengthen day as a skill. Also consider what you do with the leash. Leashes coming on and off can be their own distraction. And for many dogs, they learn that removing a leash or collar is a signal to just run off. So if you happen to just unclip the leash when you're out hiking or in the park or something and they're allowed to go run away, that sometimes can create its own kind of confusion. So I think it's really worthwhile to teach your dog that if you've cue to sit in a stay or down and stay and you unclip the leash, it doesn't mean that that's a signal to get up and go. That So practice that by cueing your stay. And then unclip the leash, immediately reward the dog, clip it back on. Unclip the leash, immediately reward, clip it back on. Repeat that and add some duration to how long you wait before you reclip the leash, and they'll begin to learn to wait for that. Or you can practice with the collar that you will use um, when you run in, in a trial. If it's one that goes over their head, for example, um, that's just a really um, important piece of proofing the stay so that no matter what happens with the collar, then they will just still understand to wait for the release word. And that's the way they know to get out of their stay. All right. So another good one to add in. All right. Now let's get into some more advanced types of distractions and advanced proofing. Um, so first, stays are great great because you can train them anywhere. So it's not that we have to practice it just on the agility field. It's better if you practice it in different places because dogs are so particular about where and when they learn things that if we only practice it on the agility field, it's really not a complete understanding that stay is the same beha behavior no matter what's happening. But if you take it to different places, then they'll begin to understand and around different types of distractions that stay means hold the position until you give the release word no matter what's going on. So look for some other um, environments. So um, can you find one new location a day to practice a stay and maybe one new distraction a day that you can work around? So it might be people, dogs, definitely things that move as we know like trial environments are filled with those things. Um, things that make noise, loud places, things that like movement behind. For example, did the leash runner pick up the leash walk? Um, they should still hold the stay. So we can teach this anywhere. And one um, one really fun way to teach it that I recommend, is, and you'll see it with the, the dogs in the photos here, these are my dogs, is teach them to sit and wait while you take a photo of them. I do this all the time. And it's just, it's still just a stay where we sit on, on a different uh, surface or in a different place. And I, the distraction part is that I lift up my phone and take a photo and they have to wait until I give the release word. Okay, so that's another just one of many ways that you can prove your start line stay in different kinds of ways, in different kinds of places. All right, so be looking, be on the lookout for that as you're out and about with your dog. Um, prove your release word. So you'll see a video of this in a moment as well, um, where we want them to really be listening for the word the one word that is the signal to get up. And sometimes we say something else. Sometimes you're talking to the judge. They should understand that is this one singular word. And so once you've had a chance to practice your basic stay, proof it in different places, and also have had an opportunity to practice the release word. And this is important because we want the consistency of, of waiting for the release word for the dog. We also want you to have had an opportunity to practice consistently giving that release word and consistently holding your dog to that release word. So what that means is sometimes dogs anticipate their release word. So you may have noticed that maybe some dogs, maybe yours or someone else's is in a stay and you go to take a breath to say the release word and they release. So they're seeing you go and they get up because they know you're about to say it, that's anticipating. And I want them to understand, wait for that word to be all the way out of my mouth before you get up. Proof your stay to that level with your release word, chosen word, okay, or stay, break, um, okay, or break or whatever release word you happen to use. Then start to add other words. 
So for example, sit and stay and you say um, random words like you know, Tuesday or whatever it might be, um, examples here like colors or names of objects, just the words until your dog um, and then finally give the okay. And then they can learn to really pick out the exact release word. That, when you practice that, first practice it where you are completely still so they can really easily focus on the word. And then later you can add um, your mo movement into it as well. And I think it's helpful if you've already taught them to wait to be released to a bowl or a toy really strongly. Um, but you can also go back and award them in position as you're practicing this one as well if you're still working on randomizing your rewards. Okay, so um, I think we can go ahead and look at some examples of these right now. All right, so here is this one where this is my young dog. And I don't know, you may not hear the audio on this, but here is the pre-placed reward. So she's already learned to wait for that. And here I'm actually working on both movement. But do you see there that she moved? So that's breaking my criteria. And so here I'm going to put her back where I had her. And in this exercise, I'm proofing my movement and also words. So here I'm setting, saying other things. And then finally the release word. Okay. So she's to the level now because she's, you know, we work on it quite often that I can put two of those things together. But there again, she moved. So now I'm going to put her back so we have that clarity. On your mark. Get set. Get ready. Get steady. Oh, oopsie. And I just make it fun. If she gets up, oopsie, we go back to our spot. No big deal. But I'm going to be super clear about it with her. Get set. Get ready. Okay. Super. Yeah, she's so smart. And this to her is a fun game that I play. Um, it's just so, like a thing where we smile together. If she gets up, I just laugh. So we don't make it serious. We make it just another way of like, hey, we'll figure out how to get your reward by waiting for these release words, or for the, the exact release word. And I added more motion. So you'll see like I'm working on like being able to run forward, give other gestures. I do keep my eye on her, of course, because we need to see the okay. criteria. And first we practice it without obstacles so that um, we can focus just on that particular skill. All right, so release word first, the first phase of this being no handler motion, just working on proofing the word. And then here I'm, I've taught it to the point where I could combine the two, where I'm asking her to um, listen for the word and the handler motion. You can also just work on handler motion, which I'm doing there. So there was no release word proofing, no um, random words, just handler motion. Um, All right, so proof one, then the other, and then when they're strong, put them together. And then we're gonna start to think about obstacles because obstacles can be their own distractions. Dogs really love to go to obstacles. Um, hopefully uh, we've been teaching that. And so sometimes when they see us lead out and pass the plane of the first obstacle, for example, that that can cause them to want to get up and start running. So we're gonna introduce to them the same exercise that we were just doing on the flat um, with obstacles around. So being out past the plane of the obstacle, doing um, different motions, like for example, what like looks like a force front cross or um, hand motions or different things like that and asking the dog to hold criteria. So practicing in different positions, meaning handler position. Um, so are you go leading out really far? Are you doing a front cross or, or whatever that might look like? Um, and then adding other distractions as well as we go along, which you'll see in the video I'm gonna show you in a moment. Now you can still go back and reward your dog even at this phase. Um, so we're going to still make sure we see our criteria, hold them to the criteria, and if they need a little bit of review, I can lead out past the plane, go back and award, lead out again, release to my pre-placed reward, or um, release to the obstacle. All right, so we'll show you a video of this one. All right, so same, she has this setup routine where it's lay down and get between my feet, lay down, always doing that the same way and here now taking steps doing little motions that look like handling okay. shake the hand Super. release word, reward Good. and praise and play <laughs> so it's still just fun fun stuff that we do together little yeah. kind of like game puzzles um, for her to think about you know, what is the key to getting to her reward and it's waiting for the release word But here, if I saw she was getting up quite a bit, I would go back and reward her in position and kind of just review that. But you, things like shaking the toy, other higher level distractions, force front cross, hand shaking, and you can see there that that's one where she thought, okay, I should get up, but there was no release word given. So we're gonna still help her understand, nope, hold the position. 
by staying consistent to the criteria, okay. making it a little easier, and then Good now work. we get the release work, we get a reward. And of course, more rewards by playing together. So if you're using a toy, make sure you play with them a lot. Um, that's how we still are creating that high rate of reinforcement and um, value in the exercise. Yeah, so more different types of movement. Here's the force front cross on the other side. And so here too, we have to kind of um, review that with her. Dogs are that particular that even though she learned it in one direction, the other direction still looks different enough that they still might have a question. They're very detailed about things, but there we got a really nice hole. So now I can release and reward. Yep, so practicing kind of the same thing on the other side, front crosses. And I do this with a toy, but if you're using food, I would either pre-place the food in a bowl on the ground or, or put it in a uh, lotus ball that I can drop, or, I, or you can feed from your hand in this case. This is also fine. Now I'm going to get extra crazy here with it. So even sillier things that like are totally unexpected, that if we prove to a super high level, uh, well beyond what they would expect them to encounter in a trial, then trials are easy. So really build the skills um, and you can have really, really reliable stays. All right, and that's this next point, which is extreme proofing. So what are the really, really exciting um, types of circumstances that you can practice in to really help your dog to understand hold the stay, even if a dog is running or somebody's tugging outside the ring behind you, any of those types of things, throw toys around your dog. Um, what are the really, really high level ideas that we can come up with? So here's an example that you can do if you have a friend to train with, or maybe ask your instructor at your training hall to, to try this uh, with the group in pairs where one person is focusing on rewarding for a stay. And here you'll see this handler is using food um, to reward as her dog is as the dog is running so this is some super high level pr proofing um where we can really add some speed and so here when you're really increasing the level totally okay to go back to rewarding in position and then go through the same process of randomizing when you reward. and you can see that there now the handler is adding some distance going back and rewarding and then release word okay and so we can build on that in all kinds of different ways where we can have them next to the tunnel we can create a curved tunnel and both dogs actually get to practice a little bit of stay and release there as well. All right, and shorter distance at first, and then moving further away to go along, going back and rewarding as needed. So if they can hold the stay here under these circumstances, then anything you might face at a trial should feel really easy. And then once we've done that, then trials themselves become not like something to stress where, you know, what might happen at the start line, we don't worry about it because we've already taught all of that um, in our training. All right, so those are some examples of some higher level challenges that you can practice with your dogs. All right, so finally we'll talk about how do we how do we maintain our stays and how do we repair broken start line stays. And the first thing I will mention is to be proactive as you can. So if you're uh, if you're practicing your stays in different ways every little every day, like little ways like maybe one minute or two on your walks or you're doing those little pet photos or things like that, um, or the little games where you're releasing to the reward. I do that every single day in different different types of places. Um, it's just a fun thing to do with your dog. It's a relationship builder and it lets you prove your stay. So um, that's the first recommendation I'll make is to just stay one step ahead of it and, and keep it strong that way. But remember, part of that is staying consistent. So ultra black and white about your criteria and holding your dog to wait to the release word. All right, so there we have the consistency part because that's usually the reason why stays begin to break down is there's some little question in the dog's mind. They maybe got up slightly too early in the trial and you ran anyway. Um, even if it's bottom lifting off the ground or they they creeped forward a little bit, that's enough to create some confusion in their mind. And so clarity le leads to reliability. So always keep it super, super consistent. Um, and if you need to, if you notice like two or three times that they're breaking their stays, then go back and do some more maintenance, some extra maintenance there. And if you're at a trial, as I said, 
always go back and reset. Or if, I'm, if the rules are that I can't go back and reset, then I might just end the run and, and leave the ring and come back later. But um, you, know, you have to make those, it's, it's really important to stay consistent. So um, be thinking about that as you are competing with your dogs. Um, and then some other little important points, as we mentioned, when you're fixing a broken start line, go back to foundations, start over with a new cue. Many times the verbal cue that we've taught, like if they're getting up um, and breaking the stay, then that cue is a little bit broken down and we want to switch to something else. So if it was stay, change it to a wait and start over again that way. Go back to rewarding in position, um, change your release word. So if like waiting for a, they're not doing that consistently, consistently anymore, then change it to a uh, break or something like that. And then gradually add back in your distractions and really make sure you know your criteria and you are sticking to it, all right? Um, and that's really what it boils down to is just doing some retraining. Now, also there are competitions where they allow for NFC. So not for competition runs where you can, instead of competing, you can go and decide to train. And this is a great way to help um, fix a broken start line and it's a great way to introduce your young dog to holding a start line is by using these NFC runs. So if you're, or, or uh, FEO, not for competition or for exhibition only. So look and see if that's offered at the places where you're competing. Um, retrain the stay part before you put it in front of obstacles, teach it on the flat, proof it in different places, make sure it's really strong just on its own, and then add it back into obstacles, especially if your dog is highly obstacle focused. Remember to teach the patience part so that if they learn to wait and that waiting pays off, then they will do more of that. And remember, praise is one of the ways you can reward your dog all the time. So many of us tend to, to repeat stay, 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 or wait, wait. But if you're instead, you've chewed the stay and then you're saying good dog, good job, that's awesome, then you're rewarding them. And that gives them information. Remember, we tell them they're right. And so if they feel like, okay, I'm doing it right by holding this stay, then they understand that that's the correct thing. It becomes more reliable, okay? So remember to praise. Now, we also want to tell a little bit of what mine looks like go to the spot, cue the behavior, take the leash off, lead out, release, run. So start to think about that, but also think about what will you do before you go in the ring um, to help make sure your dog is focused on you. So are you practicing a, a, a down and settle? Are you doing little happy tricks with them? Like we said, consider what type of collar or harness you will use to make this part easy and do, what part of the routine will be the part where you take the leash off. All right, and we talked talk about how to train around that, but think about creating a consistent routine around the start line. So again, they always know what to expect. And finally, if your start line problems are a little bit related to stress, which sometimes that happens and stress can be um, stressing up. So dogs getting really excited and wanting to get up and run early or dogs step down and avoid and go off and sniff that kind of thing. But generally the approach is the same. I want to help the dog feel as relaxed and comfortable as possible. Um, and I'll do that by teaching some, what we call happy tricks that we can do outside the start line or outside the ring. So um, for my, one of my Shelties who went through a phase of ring stress, it was speak on cue. Uh, so I taught her to just, Shelties like to bark. So I taught her to bark and that loosened her up and relaxed her. And then she was able to focus on her stay, but you might teach other stuff. Like tricks are great because when dogs do tricks, we smile and laugh and then that makes them happy. It loosens us up as well and makes us a little bit more relaxed too. And that can really help when you're entering the ring. Um, get them used to trial environments as much as you can um, and make it really rewarding to be there teach them like down and settles and do your happy tricks. So it's just a fun place to be. Um, and again, use your not for competition runs if you can. Okay. So those things really help you to like, as that, that step between training ring and trial. So take advantage of those if possible. All right. So thank you for watching. Um, post your questions in the chat and be on the lookout for the emails that are coming.